so the kitchen we're going to put in um, is going to be along these two walls here. So the long wall by the window and then this return wall here. So quite simple. Um, so how we do that is I have got all my cabinets saved in different ranges. So I've got hundreds of different cabinets which I've saved along the way, all different door sizes. I'll just show you an example. So if I open up the components uh, box there, again I just did that with a shortcut key. Um, you can go to their windows and find the right tray there, but I won't waste too much time on that. So here's all my saved um, saved components and these are actually just folders and then there's subfolders within folders. So if we go to cabinet ranges, um, all these little folders here represent a different range. So within each one of those, you've got lots of different cabinets um, divided by um, or sorted by door style. Uh, so let's look at that in a list view. Um, and we're going to be using Shaker Leon Doors New, this one here. So I've clicked that, and again, you've got subfolders here. Um, so you've got base cabinets, dresser cabinets, tall cabinets, etc. Mm -hmm. So if you click onto base cabinets, then that's further divided into subfolders. Um, as you can see, appliance housing, corner cabinets, um, drawer packs, all that sort of thing. So just as an example, click on full height doors. And now these are the actual components rather than um, subfolders. So you can view them by thumbnail. So let's say we want to put this one in here, simply click it and bring it into the model. And all of these uh, cabinets are available to my paid subscribers. So you get so much free stuff. You get thousands of cabinets for free, decorative items and other stuff. Um, right, so now that's into the model. Uh, what you can do is put it against the wall and rotate it. So let's say we we want to go against this wall, easy peasy, just snaps into place. Let's say we want to put it on the window wall, a quick rotate, and then we snap it into place. So how did I rotate that? Well, I'm pressing Shift and B, which is a shortcut to a extension. Um, an extension is called Rotate 90, and I strongly suggest that you do download that. So if I go to my extension manager, um, you can see here, Rotate 90 by Clark Bremer. Um, you can get that from the SketchUp plugin warehouse, which is this button down here. You just search for it and download whatever you want. And once you've downloaded it and installed it as an extension, you can then assign um, the shortcut keys to do that. Um, I'll tackle that in another video, but so easy. Otherwise, just use the SketchUp Rotate. You have to use this tool here, then you have to click on there, do that, select an angle, and then move it. It's all very tedious and tiresome. You don't need to do that. Just flip it around with Rotate 90. Easy peasy. So another extension which I'm going to show you um, is something called Flex Tools. And all it is, it's another way to access my saved components. So um, my saved components are simply saved. Um, well, they're just saved on my hard drive. Um, so if you go to, um, hang on a second. If you go to users, let's go to not default users. That's me, app data, roaming. SketchUp, SketchUp 23, SketchUp again, and then components. This is where I've saved all my components. And then you can see these are the subfolders. So we were, we were using Shaker Lay on New, which is this one. Um, you can see all my base cabinets, etc., etc. And these are all the different models. Um, so what Flex Tools is, let me just open it. It's another way of accessing that. So instead of using the components tray, which is this thing here, you just use this. And the only difference is this is a bit easier to use. You can search for components in a search box. You can um, pin different folders like I'm doing here. 
um, so I can zip, quickly zip to my end panels, quickly zip to my fillers and posts if I want to, and then um, if I want to sort of get to any cabinet range for any door style, I can do that. Um, so I prefer to use flex tools rather than the standard SketchUp uh, components thing. Um, so yeah, that's flex tools. So uh, how I would normally start um, is I'd put the um, anchor cabinets in, which are things like um, sink units and corner units, uh, because they're sort of cabinets where you want to have inset positions. Uh, for example, a sink unit would normally go centrally under a window where possible. Well, that's how, at least how I design kitchens and how my clients like it. So. We'll start off with a 600 um, sink cabinet. So here we are in Flex Tools. Um, so we go, so I'm on base cabinets, then we go to sink cabinets, and I want this one here, 600 base. It's brought some of its style properties in there, which isn't a problem. Just click the tab again, and it will go into the 2D mode. So let's flip it around, and let's just put it roughly central on the window, don't have to be too precise about it at the moment. Um, let's go down a little bit, he said. Right, so next to that, we would normally, I would normally put a dishwasher one side and a pull out base unit the other side, which looks the same, um, which in a larger kitchen, you can have the luxury of doing. So let's open flex tools and then we go up one so uh, go into appliance housings, and then here's our dishwasher. Spin him round, snap him into place. And then we want a bin unit, but I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use the same cabinet here because it looks exactly the same. And then let's measure the distance we've got into the corner. So 986. So what I'm thinking is if we could squeeze um, a thousand double door base unit in there um, and then move the whole lot up a little bit, that will probably work best. So um, let's go up to full height doors and then we want two doors, a thousand, there he is. Flip him round, move him into place. And then move them up a bit. Um, and I shouldn't need to tell you this, but to move stuff around, you just press M for move, or which is the same as this sort of um, crosshair thing here, but you should know all that by now. Um, and I want to put a little filler in here. So I want 30 mil, which is what I stand I use as standard fillers. So what I would do um, is I'd go to Flex Tools, click on the filler and post sub folder, click on this base filler here, which includes sort of the plinth and a little sort of guide, um, guide at the back, it's just, just to get it in place. Let's anchor it by the plinth, click it there, and then let's highlight everything, and then just move that filler into the corner. Snaps into place, have a quick look at the 3D mode, and there we go, everything sort of nice and in, in place and the sink still sort of roughly in, in the window, it doesn't have to be exact. So next, I want to put a corner unit in. So I'm gonna use a 500 door corner because there's gonna be a bit of width taken up by a corner post. So um, let's go to our base units, base corner cupboards, and there's your 500 base, let's flip him round, and then let's snap him into place. Okay, um, so there's our sort of window run. Oops, um, I'll just move them into position. That was um, a little use of an extension uh, which I have had custom made. Um, it's just a quick, easy way to resize and reposition things. You won't get that as standard SketchUp. Um, or you won't find it on the 3D warehouse either. So 
It's something that uh, I can give to my subscribers. So if you want to move it up a bit, you just move it up by 100 mil. Uh, if you want to have it down at level, if you want to change the width of it, you can. It's a really useful, quick way of changing the size and position um, of things. But don't, uh, don't worry about that for now. Um, it's not essential that you have it. It's just a useful little tool. Right, what I want next is some tall units in this corner here. And then after that, we're going to fill in this little bit here with a, with a hob. So I'm going to have a, a tall fridge freezer integrated in the corner and then an oven and microwave or combi next to it. Again, a tall unit. The first thing we want to do is put a little tall filler here so it can be scribed into the wall. So again, using flex tools, go up to fillers and post, and I have a standard size filler, which is this one, 1970 by 30 width. So let's flip him round. 1970 is the height of the cabinet, and then you've got to add 150 um, plinth to that, which gives you two 120 which if you are a UK kitchen designer, you'll probably know that that's a standard height, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I can make a cabinet range specifically for you if you want. Just give us a tinkle and I'll give you a price. Okay, so there's um, the filler in the corner. Right, next we want the fridge freezer. So we go back to our range, which is shaker lay on new. And then we go to tall cabinets 1970 and then we want um, tall fridge freezer housings click there Let's spin them around put them into place and then we've got the handle on the right but we want the handle on the left so what we do is we just quickly flip it 2D mode and then um, next we want a tall oven housing and it's this one we want tall housing oven plus combi so click that spin him round snap him into place quick look 3D mode yep looks okay so far and then we're going to come down and put our um, drawer unit and hob uh, and some filler cabinets here. Before we do that, we need an end panel on this um, oven housing, which is normal with a, with a little notched out plinth. So again, back to flex tools, which I've accidentally closed. So let's open it up again. And we want end panels. And then we want two on 2600 with the cutout plinth. Spin it round, snap it into place, and have a quick look. Okay, so I haven't assigned a height for that yet. So again, using my clever little tool, we just put position to zero and down it goes. Um, so that's our end panel there. So let's measure what we've got to play with. So from here to here, we've got um, 1622. So we want to make up the 22 somewhere, which will probably be, um, I'll make this filler wider, and then it gives us 1800, which is a nice sort of figure to play with. Um, but also, um, I'm just wondering if we should have put a 600 door here. Yeah, we've got room, so let's delete that. I'm going to do this in 3D rather than 2D this time, which you can do either, just to demonstrate it. So we go to base cabinets, base corners, 600, flip it round. Then let's move that into position. Oops, something weird happened then. I um, yeah, I flipped it on the wrong axis, but don't worry about that. And 
Now let's just double check. Hmm. Okay, we need 560, so I need to gain four mil from somewhere. Easy peasy, we do it from here. So instead of this being 30, change it to 26. So again, with our little tool, change it from 30 to 26. And then we move all those over by four mil. That gives us our 560 depth. Oh, let's go back to 2D. Okay, so that's all of our base and tool cabinets in place with the worktop. And you may be asking me, what time is it? Well, it's time to put some wall cabinets in place. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to hide the worktop on the 2D plan because it confuses things a bit and it's updated. Um, so yeah, so let's start here. I'll put a 1000 double door wall cabinet to match the base cabinet below it. I'm just gonna hide this upstand as well. Um, right, so yeah, back to flex tools. And then we go to wall cabinets. And we're going to use 720 high wall cabinets because as you can see I've divided them into different heights, standard door sizes. Um, and then we want a thousand wide, which is this one here. Let's flip him around, let's put him into place. There's a few bits in the model which are confusing things, so I'm just hiding the upstand so we can do this better. So what you'll see when we go to the 3D view um, is that uh, it's automatically gone in at the right height. That's because I've set the height um, on the attributes. So you see Z, the Z position is 140 and that's built into the component. So if I try to move that down, it's just going to bounce back up again. Likewise, if I move it up, it's just going to bounce back down to this level. What it means is it's going to be exactly level with these tool cabinets here. Um, if you want to change that uh, height, what you've got to do is explode it and then group it again. Uh, or otherwise, uh, go into, um, oops, otherwise leave it as a component and then just lost the components box. Hang on a minute. Go and just change that to whatever you want it to. So if you want it 150 high, up it goes, or you can just delete it completely. Um, and then just move it to wherever you want. Uh, right, so one thing that I haven't allowed for is again, a wall filler here, which I want. So, um, Let's do a standard 30 mil wall filler. So let's move this across 30 mil. Um, again, I am going to work in 3D just for this one. You don't have to, but I am. Uh, so wall filler, 720 by 30. Let's flip him around. And then we want this back edge level with that. Um, carcass corner so the front is flush with the door just like that go back to plan view and we want to finish it off with an end panel on the side so we go to end panels and we find a wall end panel this one 720 by 350 Get around and then a little bit closer so we can snap it into place. And there we go. 3D view. Uh, well, I haven't set uh, the height on that. So we're going to use our little custom tool and then make the Z position 140. 
40. Oops. Why didn't that work? Ah, sorry, uh, that was the height of the thing. Um, hang on. Uh, yeah, so then we need to make the Z position 140 centimeters. So that was my mistake. Um, the height should be millimeters, not centimeters. So let's make that 1400 and then there we go. Bob is our uncle. So again, just measuring the room we've got. Um, tape measure tool, uh, 1622. So we need to um, close the gap by 22 mil. So as I said before, let's move these covenants over, 22. And then this filler panel, using our tool, we'll add 22 to 30, so it becomes 52. There we go. Got a nice, even 1800 to play with. So what I'm going to do is put a thousand draw pack in the middle with the hob on it and then two 300 cupboards either side. So let's put the, um, the 300 cupboards in first. Um, so there'll be full height doors. Um, there's the 300. Flip it around. Let's grab it by the plinth this time. Let's snap into place nicely. As you can see, the handle's on the left, we want it on the right, so let's flip it over on the green axis like that. And then we want the draw packs. So we'll have a two pan, two deep pan draw cabinet, which is a thousand wide, which is this one. Let's get it in the back this time, snap them into place. And then the other 300 cupboard, we'll just copy across. So press M for move and control, and that'll duplicate it and snap it and then flip it over so the handle's on the right and let's have a quick look. Yep, that all looks pretty good. No space anywhere, everything's nice and flush. So that's the base cabinets in place. So the next thing I would I normally do is put the worktop on because I just like to work from the bottom up. Um, then we'll do the wall cabinets after that. So again, I have got a really useful extension I use um, for doing it. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, just like draw a rectangle and then push pull it up, say 20 mil, and then push pull the face so it's level with the door. Then let's give it a 15 mil overhang, etc., etc., and then just move it all into place. But instead of doing all that, I've got a quicker way, and that's using um, Madge Follow Me, which is this. And Mr. Madge has some really good extensions, um, which you can find on the 3D Warehouse. Um, so this Follow Me is uh, really useful because you can create your own profiles. Um, easier if I just show you. So I've created a worktop profile. So all you do is you click once there, once there, once there, double click and there's your worktop. How easy is that? Um, and then you just like fill in the edge here. Just, just push pull the edge there. And you see I've created a little sort of um, curve on the front edge there. I could have just put a little bevel, but um, you can do anything you want. And also um, it's I've assigned it a quartz material. So when we do our V-Ray renders, that will come out um, a nice sort of shiny quartz with a little fleck in it. Um, so there's our worktop. Of course, um, we need to put a little rectangle and push-pull to get our hole for our sink. But once you've done this a few times, this is a really quick job, not very tedious at all. 
that into place. Just overhang the sig. I'm not going to get too fussy about it. That's fine. And again, using the same um, tool, Madge Follow Me, you can also add an upstand, which I've got a standard 100 mil upstand, which I use. Um, which I'm having some issues with this, like it. I can't go from there to there, but I can go from there to there. Double click it, it's still not worked. Move it out 10 mil. Um, depending on which axis you draw it along, sometimes it does funny things, but you'll see at least that these two axes are fine. Double click when you want to finish and look again, upstand. How easy is that? No messing around. Okay, so now we need to put wall cabinets uh, here and then a return along the wall to go right up against this. And we're going to put um, an integrated extractor housing. Um, actually, just quickly before <coughs> we uh, carry on with the wall cabinets, before I forget, I want to put the hob in. So let's pull up our um, standard components. And these are all saved items, which I created um, or saved from the 3D warehouse. Uh, not that one. That's it. Induction hob 780. That's what we want. It's just it's going to 2D and move that into place. It's a bit easier to do it that way. Okay, I'm not going to be too exact about it, but that'll do. Um, so yeah, so we want to have a double door wall cabinet here, if possible, then a corner cupboard and then step up to a bridging unit which will house the extractor and then possibly down again. So um, let's see what space we've got here first. So let's get the tape measure tool and measure to the wall. If you see the bottom right, it says we've got 1328. So if we've got 1328, less 350 depth for the cabinet carcass, less 40 depth for the corner post, um, We've got 938, we need to leave a bit of space here. So we'll put a 900 cabinet here. Um, we might just have to sort of play around with this and see what happens. Um, I'm actually inclined to start from here and then work this way because we've got like a, a set flat edge to work with. Um, and we need the bridging unit over here. So, um, yeah, so we want a 300 wall cabinet here to match that one below. So let's go to our flex tools. Um, and there we go, there's our 300 wall cabinet. I'm gonna switch to 2D, I prefer it. Grab it by the corner and then let's snap it into place. Um, then we want to flip it so the handles on the side as the base cupboard below. And then we want a bridging unit extractor housing here, which is a thousand wide to match this. So um, I've saved some standard ones. So if you go to Bridget, bridging unit, extractor housing, this is it, 360 height by a thousand wide. So let's flip that round and then just snap them into place. And then we just copy this 300 cabinet over and then Flip it round so the handle is on the right. Let's have a quick look at that in 3D. Okay, I haven't assigned a height for that, so it's done something silly, but that's easy to snap into place. Oh dear, where's our other? Okay, I don't think that copied across. I think I just moved it. It doesn't matter. Right, look under there. We've got our extractor already built in. So, Let's get those back. So how much space have we got from here to the corner? I hear you cry. 618 is the answer. Uh, so we want a corner cupboard with a 260 wide door on it. Don't ask me why, we just do. Um, so, do we have one? No, we don't have one, but we will use um, 
another one and just change the door size. So let's use this one with the 350 door. Okay. Let's flip that around. So that has got a 350 door. So we want to change that to, we want to reduce it by 90. So let's just double click in the group and then we'll just manually change this. Let's change the handle. Again, move it across 90. Let's make the carcass less by Normally you won't have to do this. I'll make sure that all the correct doors are saved, but you know, this is SketchUp. You can do anything really. So that's what makes it such a good program to work with because you can literally just make up cabinets on the spot. So we've got 320 depth there. So now um, we said we were going to put a 900 cabinet here. So let's open up Flex Tools again. And we want a double door 900, which is this one. So flip him around. And then what I'm going to do is get the corner edge of the carcass and then attach him to the back corner of the corner post. And that's how we do it. Um, this cabinet is slightly too deep for this. Um, Normally I'd keep these the same depth and I'd try and play around here, but we don't have a lot of options here. So we are going to have to make this less deep. So if I go to invisible mode or x-ray, you can just about see, well, where this dark line stops and becomes a lighter line, where that x appears. So if I click once there and once there into the wall, you can see that we need to shorten, we need to lessen the depth by 30 mil because that's how much is sticking into the wall at the moment. So easy to do, let's hide the wall, double click on that and push pull it in and type 30, enter. And then you can see a nice sort of flush line there is flush against the wall. Yeah, so next we need to put an end panel on it. So let's copy that one across, let's stick it into place there. Um, I don't like this. I don't like the fact that we've got 71 mil here and 23 here. Um, yeah, we need to find 50 mil. So um, I'm going to change this setup here um, and I'm going to um, need to find 50 mil. So I'm going to make one of the doors left less by 50 mil. Actually, no, we won't. I'm going to make it a bespoke cabinet. First of all, let's make this end panel less deep by using the scale tool and inferencing against the door. Take measure tool to go in by 50. I'm going to explode that because I don't want the handles to reduce so they get distorted. I'm going to regroup that without the handles, press the scale tool and there we lessen the whole thing by 50 mil and then I'm just going to move the handles across. That's a little bit of a cheat but just for the purposes of this video just forget it and then let's move that across. Voila, Rodney. Voila. Okay, so next we're going to add a cornice along the top of the wall and the tall cabinets. Uh, again, we're going to use this useful extension uh, called Madge Follow Me. So I've made my own cornice profile in there. So all we do is click on the points where we want it to... Um, to turn 90 degrees and then double click at the end to uh, just to finish off the trend, the um, procedure. Yep, okay, that's fine. And let's do it again on this run here. So starting here, just click on the endpoints. 
Really easy, saves a lot of faffing around with the follow me tool. Really great extension this, one of my favourites. Double click it. There we go. And then let's make it the same grey colour. And then this one, um, I went slightly inside, so I'm just going to quickly adjust it by just using the move tool. Just a little bit, it doesn't need much. Okay, I can see that you know, this filler hasn't been assigned a color, so we change that from white to gray, same with this one, and same with that one. I think that's it.